Welcome to the Contractor Success Map Podcast. I'm your host, Bradley Hart, and I'm an expert on how you can get the most out of your contracting company. The reason I designed this show is to help you turn your contracting company from a people-dependent money pit into a process-dependent cash cow to have the freedom you dreamed of when you started your business. Every Friday, we're releasing podcasts and information to help you get the most out of your contracting company. Be sure to join us at www.contractorsuccessmap.com and subscribe to receive our latest articles and special offers. And the best part, it's all free, just for you. Hello there. Welcome back or welcome to our podcast. I hope you are doing great and in excellent health. This is Norhalma delivering our 559th episode by Sherry DeHart. You can listen to the other sessions on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever podcast content is published. They are non-sequential, so you can listen to the topics that interest you the most. Sherry's post today is about mastering tone for construction company connections. Let's explore it. Mastering the right tone is critical when connecting and communicating with people in the construction business. Whether you're writing an email, making a phone call, or meeting in person, how you present yourself can make all the difference in building strong relationships with clients, colleagues, and partners. Research suggests that as much as 93% of communication is nonverbal. So it's unsurprising that the tone and meaning of emails and messages are misinterpreted as much as half the time. For small construction businesses, email is frequently the preferred way to communicate with new leads, customers, and employees. But if you haven't mastered your tone, the meaning of your message may be lost. In the worst case scenario, you may even unintentionally offend your audience. Follow these tips to improve your tone when writing emails or other business communications. First, adapt to your audience. Tone reflects the writer's attitude toward the reader. So you'll use a different tone depending on whether you're asking a bank officer for a loan or your client to respond to your change order question. Your relationship and purpose will help you decide on your word choices, which might be serious and formal, or relaxed and fun. Using active voice will bring your reader right to the point. Taking care always to use courteous language will keep them on the side. Second, be clear and concise. Avoid using jargon or technical terms such as load-bearing walls or footings that may not be familiar to everyone you're communicating with. Instead, try to use plain language that is easy to understand and gets your point across effectively. If it's in written form and you doubt how an email may be interpreted, hit save and return to it a day later or ask the colleague to read it and provide some feedback. These additional tips can help you write emails that get read and avoid offense or confusion. Avoid using slang or sexist language. Remove any unnecessary words. Be appropriately respectful of subordination. And be gracious. Please and thank you. You go a long way with creating the right tone, which will keep you from being too abrupt, especially if your email is brief. Third, be professional and respectful. Use proper grammar and spelling. Address people appropriately in all your interactions and avoid confrontational or aggressive language. What to do when delivering a negative message? The tone becomes a more significant challenge if your message contains terrible news. After all, there's no way around creating unpleasant feelings in some circumstances. You can, however, avoid insult to injury by following these tips. Thank the reader for their message. 
briefly explaining why you cannot approve a request. In this case, passive voice is preferred because it helps neutralize the message. Take care to avoid personal attacks. You can maintain a professional tone by deferring to policies rather than personal feelings about an event or situation. Avoid the bright side. Listing any perceived benefits can come off as uncaring by downplaying the emotional impact the reader may experience upon receiving the message. Drafting a style guide this January for a fresh start will help make your construction company's tone rules clear to staff. Help build greater brand recognition with a consistent voice and help you avoid the wrong tone in your communications. Start by defining your tone. Is it casual, fun, formal, serious, or quirky? Come up with five words that describe the tone of your brand. Then, list words that may and may not be used in your marketing emails. To illustrate exactly what you're aiming for with tone, include some sample text in your guide. Perhaps some of your company's collateral or examples of marketing emails you'd like your construction business to em emulate. Selling your services to homeowners involves art and creativity. Words are powerful and visuals are captivating. Combine them with your preferred business tone to make a fascinating web page to attract the right audience. You can also learn a lot by looking at your competition. Pay attention to where they advertise, how they present their advertising, and the tone they use in their written material. Subscribing to competitor newsletters or regularly checking their websites is a good way of keeping up to date from a distance. Remember, through it all, being an active listener is the key. One of the most valuable gifts one can give another person is to listen with empathy and understanding and let them speak until they are finished. Final thoughts. Being personable and approachable in connecting with others is essential. Don't be afraid to inject a little bit of personality or humor into your messaging, as long as it's appropriate and doesn't detract from the overall professionalism of your communication. Whether you're communicating with employees about company issues, hoping to negotiate a rent reduction with a landowner, or changes to credit terms to your banker, by mastering the tone in your construction business communication, you can build stronger relationships, avoid misunderstandings, and ultimately achieve tremendous success in your work. And that ends Sherry's blog post. Do you want to discuss growing your construction business this new year? Please don't hesitate to contact us. You can always email Sherry at Sherry, S-H-A-R-I-E, Sherry at FastEasyAccounting.com or you can give her a call at our toll-free number 1-800-361-1770 or our Washington State local phone line 206-361-3950. Those numbers are a direct access to her if it goes to... Um, if it's busy or goes to voicemail, please don't forget to leave your name, your company, and your message, of course, and the number, the best number to contact you back. And yes, our promo code is still available for you to use. It's podcast20, P-O-D-C-A-S-D-2-0, podcast20, which you can use to buy bookkeeping templates in our fast, easy accounting store or if you would like to enroll in one of our construction accounting classes in our Construction Accounting Academy. Links to our online store and academy are in our blog. On behalf of Sherry and our team here at Fast Easy Accounting, this is Norhalma. Thank you all for listening. Stay safe and healthy. And stay tuned for upcoming episodes on how to turn your contracting company into a process-dependent cash cow. Bye for now. Thanks for tuning in. You're listening to the Contractor Success Map, 
If you enjoyed the show, please leave a five-star rating and review here on iTunes, and make sure to head over to www.contractorsuccessmap.com to subscribe to receive the latest articles and special offers. If you'd like to discuss your business strategy, simply click on the button labeled Strategy Session. And the best part, it's all free, just for you.